Hello, Pastor Josh. Hi. Welcome to Classes Wisconsin Weekly, the very unofficial Classes Wisconsin interview show. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, and then I'll ask you the, uh, the normal Classes Wisconsin Weekly question. All right. Well, first of all, it's an honor, Zach, to be on your show today. So, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm Pastor Josh, Christ Community Church in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and uh, um, I've been here a little over four years, four years in June, so um, I got a wife, I got three boys, young boys, they're uh, 11, 9, and 6, so obviously I have to think about that. The youngest is going to be 7 here in November, so, and uh, it's my family, I guess, Um we're really enjoying our time here in Sheboygan. It's a uh, wonderful, great church, great uh, church family, and uh, um, yeah. We have a couple of connections outside of the classes. Our wives work together at the school, at Sheboygan yep. Christian School, and uh, your church has a pretty big place in my heart. When I was a high school student, before you were at Christ Community, uh, they invited me to play guitar in the evenings. They had some worship in the evenings. And it was like the first place that I ever played electric guitar in worship before, uh, which was pretty formative in my life, believe it or not. So it was before Aaron was there. Kevin was leading the, the Come Alive services in the evening. And Jim would sing and Trish would play. And those were, those were great and formative times for me. So I appreciate your church, and I appreciate you. The 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 normal the normal. Well, I, go ahead. I I know the church appreciates you too, Zach. I hear a lot of stories about you. Some some good, mostly good, yeah. I should say, mostly Fair good. We spend a lot of time. <laughs> Christ Community Church has the most interesting, like secret passageways of any church I've ever been in. There's like cool places you can get behind walls just randomly by the steps there and behind the front of the sanctuary. And there's that big catwalk up by your storage area and you can get up by the bell. And so we've, we've explored every, every spot in the church. Even like the boiler room has like two stages. You go in and then you kind of like hug around a corner and you feel like you're in a secret part of the church. Yeah, the dungeon. Yeah, the dungeon. Yeah, it looks like a dungeon it too. Does. Yeah, and it's fun to explore and uh, yeah, high school students. it's a it is a, it's a kind of a cool catwalk. I've been all the way to the end of it. I I, I think I've been in every place in the church. I uh, we have seagulls that go up in the towers and sometimes during the during the year, and so they're pretty protective. Yeah, I uh, interrupted their uh, their <laughs> social gathering on the top of the tower once. I stuck my head up. There's a little hole, so you climb right. up there and you stick right. your head up through that hole. And they were dive bombing me right away and were making so much noise. I, I started just so I went for a walk and they were still screaming and flying around that castle when I, or the little tower there when I came back. So I'm probably waking up the whole neighborhood. But it's, it's cool up there. You see a lot of Sheboygan from up on top of that tower. So, yeah. uh, and as a high school it student, there. it feels like you're breaking some rule. So it's even more fun. I know. Well, I'm the pastor, so, so I feel like I can go yeah. pretty much wherever I want in the church, and Fair enough. maybe that's wrong. But okay. well, our, our our weekly question is, what are you working on? And so it's early in the week, but what what are you working on for for sermon prep this week, Josh? Okay, so uh, you know, we I I preach a narrative lectionary, and so uh, I'm a lectionary guy. I like to preach a lectionary. In the summer, it's a little more free. I do. Um, different series. We just did, went through the book of Revelation, actually, and that was uh, a lot of fun. And so right now we are just beginning the regular narrative lectionary, and that just brings us through pretty much the whole Bible, the, the themes of the Bible. And uh, so we're starting right off in Genesis 1 and 2, and so um, that's where we're going, uh, talking about uh, um you know, it's the beginning of the week, but uh, talking about the breath of God and what it means to be created in the image of God in creation. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what that looks like. I haven't written the sermon yet, but uh, um, it's always an adventure. Can I don't I, necessarily know where I'm going to end when I begin. Yeah. But Can I press you a little bit to 
I, I mean, again, it's early in the week, but what just initial thoughts, things you're reading, what does it mean to be an image bearer of God? Like, where, where do you think you're going with it? Yeah, well, it's, it's wild to think about what that could mean and how that, how our ideas of that is shifted after the fall, right? And uh, how we were created to be image bearers of God in his perfect creation. I think that that's, uh, I think that our ideas of who we are and who we're created to be and who God is calling us to be, um, it's broken because of the fall. But that's not originally the way it was, right? I mean, obviously we were created good. Sure. And uh, some of the incredible things that, uh, you know, in the initial stages, right, of, of just really focusing on this text, um, a lot of people, I think, get, get caught up in whether or not the seven literal days and, and, and whether or not it's, it's millions of years, right? And, sure. and what does all of that mean? And, and I'm not sure that the text actually is very clear. Sure. in that and uh um there are people who who say that well you know uh, every day can be you know many years thousands of years and but the text doesn't actually really say that in fact it it's pretty clear that there was morning and there was evening each day after day sure yeah and uh it goes out but of its way to make then it you know there's pushback i remember in seminary uh talking about this and uh one of my professors was uh pushed back on that and said you know but but clearly, it looks like the world is old, right? And, and is, is God a God who would create a world that looks old, right? Is he trying to deceive people? Uh, I don't know. But I'm not sure that really Genesis gives us a lot of those answers. And maybe we have to be okay with that. And maybe that's not what Genesis 1 and 2 is about. Right. It's just about a good God who created a good creation and uh he made us good too right it's interesting you know i don't mean to get in the weeds too much about the literal seven day thing because because you're exactly right that i don't the thrust of genesis one isn't about the length of time it took to create it's about who created and what he created right mm -hmm. but i i saw a debate one time i don't know who it was with maybe hitchens and frank turek maybe Whoever the Christian was uh, took sort of a, an old earth position and said God used these evolutionary means to create. And actually, it, it was to his detriment in the debate because Hitchens said, okay, so rather than saying that God did this in six days, you're going to say he allowed m millions, maybe billions of years of death until he got what he needed. And so it's interesting, like, the, the two sides of the coin, yeah, the earth certainly looks old and there's evidence for that, but, but what does it tell us about, what does it mean about God if the earth is old, and what does it mean about creation, and that, that's the thrust of Genesis 1 that you're going to get at more so than the length of time, right? Yeah, I'm, all, I'm, I'm not really going to talk a whole lot about old earth or new earth or any of those types of things, mostly, you know, what does it mean? that we are created by a good God in a good creation. I mean, he says it over and over, right? That it's very good. It's very good. Or it's good, right? And so what does that mean, then, to be created and, and to be made a part of this good creation? And uh, and how has sin destroyed that? And I'm not sure how much we're really, you know. Um, but just to, to think about that and to wonder about that, um, that's what a lot of my week is when I think about sermons anyways wondering asking questions hmm. and what is the state what is the st the state of creation in genesis 1 and 2 tell us about the new creation the new creation well i mean it's it's interesting too to be talking about this on the heels of revelation right oh and, wow yeah cool and revelation you know we're talking about an incredible creation that is uh you know completely redeemed can we talk you can really get into some pretty deep weeds when you start to yeah. talking about these kinds of things and apologetics and uh, what does it look like um, is one of the reasons that sin is no more, right? Is it because we remember how bad it was? Ah, I don't know. 
yeah, it's start to get into some heretical things now. So maybe I better be careful. <laughs> but uh, I've had these conversations with different people too, and uh, different pastors. And uh, um, yeah, I, I think the new creation in Revelation is going to be maybe even better than creation right. in the book of Genesis, right? It's, it's got to be more than just a, a reclaiming of original creation. I think, I don't know who this right. is original to. It, it's some, you, you might know, Pastor Drew would know. God, God gives us a garden and he returns with a city. So there's an, in, there's an intended advancement, progression there, right? The new Jerusalem is what he returns with. Uh, but but how, right. much, how much progression and advancement, I, I don't dare to say, right? But there is, yeah. some, there is something about a newness yeah. of the new creation that's distinct from the original. Yeah, that's right. Um, if I understand you right, I mean, when Christ comes back, or when Christ comes back, um, what's Philippians say, right? He makes our bodies like to be like his own body. What, is that, what does that mean? Um, what does that look like in the new creation? Um, how is that different than the creation that we talk about in Genesis? Uh, it's better. It's better. Um, but still, when we look at creation in Genesis, it was very good and uh, far better than what it is now as we talk about post-fall, right? So, um, yeah. Can we talk for just briefly about the lectionary and, and what that means? I don't know too many pastors that use the lectionary, and uh, just yeah. just tell people what a lectionary is and, and what it means for your preaching schedule. Yeah, it's it's a good question. I uh, I'm not that organized of a preacher, um, as far as I know that organization is one of my weaknesses as far as that goes. So a lectionary basically lays out a sermon schedule for me all year. In fact, years into the future, because a lectionary keeps repeating. And uh, so we're in year four, I think, of the narrative lectionary. And so uh, it has all of the scriptures already laid out. And that helps so that you preach through the entire scripture. And uh, the narrative lectionary helps you follow certain narratives um, throughout the year and uh, keeps connecting different things um, that you might not necessarily realize if you're just uh, going through uh, different sermon series that you have um of course a sermon series if you're preaching on a particular thing that 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 is also helpful but for me it's helpful for not only me to know what's going on in the future but also a worship team for example that they're not waiting on me week after week to know what the text is i i can have it laid out for them months even years in advance if they really want me to and so uh a lectionary is just uh Boy, I wish I had a sheet of paper. I could just show it to you. But uh, um, so I have, I have um, all of the texts um, already planned out for me, and could really lay it out if I really wanted to look at all of the themes. I could look at it and finish it all. It's already laid out for me for the entire year, basically. And then after year four, I think the narrative lectionary, and I haven't been doing the narrative one as long. The revised common lectionary is four years. And I was doing that before I came here. And so you, after you, year four, you just start over again with year one. And then uh, you just keep preaching through. And uh, that's, that's a helpful tool because it organizes everything for you and uh, um, helps to... Uh, to catch certain themes helps for you to preach through the entire body of scripture um, forces you to, in some circumstances, I, I got to preach out of the song of songs in one of my first years at Cedar. And uh, I don't, don't think I would have ever really challenged myself like that. Um, Cause uh, um, that's an interesting text, <laughs> an interesting uh, book of the Bible. And, uh, but I think I handle it really well. 
the people that I preached it to really enjoyed it. Uh, one of the guys after the service said, if you preach like that out of the book of Song of Songs, uh, you can preach out of that book anytime you want. That was a lot of fun. And so, uh, yeah, um, it really pushes me anyway as a pastor um, to really preach through all of Scripture. And, uh, you know, I'll some people enjoy that. Some people would rather that you preach more uh, on different sermon series and uh, hit different things. And the strength of the narrative lectionary is that it allows me to do more of that in the summer, at least. There's space for me to put whatever I really want to in there because they don't have a lot planned out. There are just different series that you can do, suggested series. Oh. This year was the Book of Revelation, and so, uh, but uh, I added a couple. Or I added one in there anyway because their series was a little shorter than what I needed. So I was going to follow up with: Do you ever, ever deviate from it? But that sort of answers the question. It gives you space to even deviate. Yeah, from cool. And I, I also deviate. Uh, through Advent, um, especially because I have a worship team now that helps tremendously. When I was in Cedar, for example, I didn't really have much of a worship team to help me work through these things mm. and to push me in those ways. So I just stuck with the lectionary, and uh, that was just easiest. It was simplest, and so that's what I did. I'm not a big fan of reinventing wheels, so um, what's there yeah. I use I'll uh, I'll put a link to the narrative lectionary, so if people wanted to look at okay. what it looks like, they could just click on that below. We use the revised common lectionary that you use in Cedar. We use that at Trinity, the the campus ministry team, okay. so that all of the ministries and and there was a lot of deviation from it to be honest, but it was sort of suggested that we all be on it, so that if you went to, you know, we had three or four different chapels and and you know, contemporary worship one night and Sunday night things. If you went to all these ministries, you'd be getting the same text, which was kind of neat when it worked, but we didn't always make yeah. it work. So. And of course, you can't really do that in the Christian Reformed Church because there are not a whole lot of lectionary preachers out there necessarily. Right. So, you know, I wouldn't expect that wherever I went, they're preaching on the same text, but, uh, right. you know, um, that's it's kind of it's kind of a neat idea. I mean, if you're going on vacation and uh, you go to you know an, another Catholic church, I think they stick with the yep, lectionary yep. pretty close. And so you you're go to keep, another Catholic church in a different part series, of the yeah. country, and they're preaching on the exact same text that your preacher is. And so uh, that's kind of neat. And that was a neat but, part uh, of it that, that yeah. I appreciated at Trinity too. Was I knew the text that I was working with for our worship, Christians around the world. Because we were using the Revised Common Lectionary, which is a common one, <laughs> uh, hence the name, maybe not. But uh, just to know that there were Christians everywhere that were working with the same text that week, which was just cool. I, it doesn't, I don't, you don't get bonus points for it or anything, but it was just neat to think that there's ministry yeah. leaders around the well, world. And if you think about, you think about, uh, you know, in our classes um, here, we're, we're getting more and more with pastor groups and you can imagine if all of the pastors in the pastor group were all preaching the exact same text and so month after month when we get together we can be talking about these texts that we're going to be preaching and wondering you know what do you guys think of these ideas and and, and just uh, really brainstorm together in different ways that we could preach the text and different things that we had gained from from our own studies and uh it, it's kind of a neat idea but you know I realize that uh, I'm also probably one of the only pastors in in our pastor cohort, anyway, that really preaches on with the lectionary, and that's okay. It doesn't bother me. It certainly is a unity bringer, which is a, a strength. Yeah. Well, anyways, we've gone long, which and there, but there are obviously weaknesses too, right? Because if there if there is something that uh, maybe maybe you you want to preach on or or um, some sermon series or whatever that you really want to hit. If you're really stuck to the lectionary and can't get off of it, then, uh, you know, you might never get to that sermon series. But yeah. I feel free to jump off at any time, really, and uh, especially since I'm the only one that does it. Um, I have all kinds of freedom to do sure. what I want, but it, it keeps me organized. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Josh and keeping the 
weekly part of the Class of Wisconsin Weekly going. And uh, I will, the same yeah. as I did last week with Jason's sermons and church websites, I'll put them, i got to line up my finger, you know, so I can point to the bottom of the video, <laughs> down there. And so you guys can keep up with what, what Pastor Josh is doing and what's happening at Christ Community Church. And uh, blessings on your sermon prep this week. All right. Thank you. Hopefully we didn't jump into too much heretical language. But, well, uh, we'll, we'll pay for hopefully it. we're not brought before classes, me in particular, but yeah, you never know. I think we're all right. It's an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Josh.